All right, welcome back to Override. Today is going to be an interesting episode. I'm your host, Paul Barron. I think you're going to want to definitely jump into this one because it is going to be hot and cold, maybe. And that is like the stock market is right now. With me and joining me today is Mr. Andrew Horowitz of Horowitz & Company. Andrew, great to have you back on one of our shows here on the network. Hey, nice to thanks. See you. This should be a fun yeah. topic. Oh, my gosh. GameStop, <laughs> Reddit, Wall Street bets. Yeah. These are the things that are, are, bar, are kind of brandishing the headlines today. <laughs> kind of give our, our audience a, an understanding of what actually happened. Well, there's a lot of things that have happened, but one of the things that really we saw was a stock uh, named GameStop, which everybody knows. You know, you go yep. in, you turn your, you buy, you buy a video console, you buy a gaming console, you buy uh, rent uh, videos, uh, uh, games. Um, there's a variety of online ways to do it, and et cetera. You know, you know the whole gaming environment. And basically, this stock was at I don't know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars. There was a huge short interest, meaning people in Wall Street, people investing were looking for this to go down even further to a point that they overdid it. Then all mm -hmm. of a sudden there was uh, kind of a murmur out there and a discussion with uh, a subreddit group called Wall Street Bets about, hey, there's a great opportunity. Let's see if we could squeeze the shorts, meaning when the price goes up on a stock, those that are short or looking to and betting for it to go down are going to have to say, you know what, I can't take this anymore and let's cover the position. Let's get out of it. Well. Yeah. There's a few other things fundamentally I think went on here that exacerbated the problem. For example, um, this thing's called options in the markets and these options were used to buy calls in out of the money, way out of the money levels on the stock. Meaning if the stock was trading at 20, the, people are saying, you know what, I'm gonna bet that sometime in the future it's gonna be worth 100. Now oftentimes those don't pay off, you'll lose your money on it. But when you start doing that in mass, what mm -hmm. happens is that the people that are selling it to you, the option traders, usually have to start thinking about hedging their position. Yeah. And the way to hedge a position is to buy the stock. So oh. now you have all these calls being bought. You have the option traders and the institutions having to hedge that bet. They hedge it by buying the stock. That buying the stock causes the short sellers to do what? To buy the stock. Yeah. That starts a whole momentum process. Individuals, other players are buying the stock. And then what happens is it creates this vicious cycle. And then you start popping the top off this stock goes from $17 to $450 yep. in a matter of two weeks. Yeah. So so this, of course, the Wall Street uh, Bets group on Reddit, I follow Reddit, a lot of the investment groups on there, actually, and I find them very uh, sometimes entertaining. Sometimes it's like, hmm, that's an interesting an interesting analysis of something, uh, and it definitely makes you dive in a little deeper down the rabbit hole. Here's my question, because there's a lot of a lot of people uh, speculating that this may have been some sort of constructed effort, and and I guess that's the million billion dollar question today, yeah. because it does kind of position the market into a very unusual situation. If a, a group like Reddit, um, and there might be some strategy that's may, maybe guiding that group, this could start happening to other stocks. So yeah. how does this yes. frame? Yeah, exactly. So obviously, what were some of the other stocks that uh, this, of course, hit? So we had AMC, we had yep. COS, KOSS, Today American Airlines. When the news came out, they were up 50% on a terrible uh, loss, but yet their earnings came out thinking things will be better. Mm -hmm. um, AMC, I mentioned AMC. Um, yep. And who else do we have in there? I have the list here. Let's see. Bed Bath uh, & Beyond. Bed Bath & Beyond. Yep. Was not, Nokia was another one. Okay. Uh, there's several other names in the area of SPACs and other uh, speculative instruments that were really rocketed up the last few days. And the biggest concern I have is what the narrative that is surrounding this is starting to, mm -hmm. to expand to. You know, the whole first is, yeah, let's stick it to Wall Street because you know what? We are going to finally have our due. All these years, we've been getting screwed by Wall Street and you know what? We're gonna go in there and we're gonna try to short circuit this by taking down this hedge fund, this Melvin hedge fund. Hey, this guy Citron, Andrew Left, who is a famous short seller, came out with yeah. a whole piece on this. We're gonna screw him. We're gonna kind of rock it to him and make him lose a lot of money because you know what? We deserve it finally. Now, these are these social justice, financial justice warriors out there that are thinking that this is a game to be played in order to do so. So that's interesting. I find it total BS, okay? I think it's greed wrapped in the idea that they wanna feel good about themselves. Because mm -hmm. what they're doing is nothing more that than being corporate raiders 
individually and collectively trying to bust up an institution of some sort because they're pissed off that they haven't made this money over the time and they're jealous, they're upset and all that. And you know what? I have no problem with trading GameStop. I have no problem making money, speculating back and forth, AMC, whatever you want to do. I have, at, when I, I encourage it. I think it's great. But to try to pretend that this is some greater purpose in what they're doing with this is totally, absolutely ridiculous. And if anybody's out there thinking that's what it's all about, you are going to have a problem in the future with major losses if that's how you're actually investing your money. Well, yeah, I think your your point is to, is definitely uh, interesting because it does kind of flow into what some of the bigger uh, positions on the internet that I've been reading. You know, you look at Barstool Sports and uh, their CEO and president uh, Dave Portney. He kind of jumped in on that. You know, the David and Goliath kind of approach that you're mentioning. Right. You know, we've seen uh, also even Chamath uh, jumped in on this on on dropping money reckless, into by the Barstool. Way, totally reckless. Elon did too. Chamath yep. did. Dave Portnoy did. And all these are just looking for a little spotlight, a little bit of relevance. To be honest with you, I think what Chamath did, I had a lot of respect for him. I lost a lot of respect. Listen. He put, from what I calculate, about $130,000 to work, made about $700,000, give or take, depending on how the math worked out, with yep. some options that he did. But to supercharge this and then to have a move up to 450 down to about 200 again, and I think it was as low as 163 mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. on, on, uh, on Thursday, you know, the thing is that this is not – there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be left in the dust. And then who are they going to blame, by the way? They're going to blame Wall Street. Wall Street, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, hey, you know what? They stopped the trading on this. They only allowed options to be closed, not opened. You know, the, the, the Robin Hood, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Easy, no more trading of this. Not. I mean, the fact of the matter is what happened was totally out of control. Um, and it's, again, it was all about greed. There'll be plenty of opportunities. But to think that a stock goes up by 100% a day for days on end with no fundamental reason to do so is a little bit, I would think, simplistic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's definitely, I mean, it's literally going into a, like a Las Vegas uh, casino. I mean, that's what essentially they're doing. And letting this, it ride. Yeah, let, let it ride. ride. So here, here's, I guess the positioning of what's happening from a social and cultural aspect is that you've got uh, millions, potentially millions of people in these kinds of forums. And as you know, with uh, the advent of uh, Robin Hood, Webull, et cetera, this this day trader you know mentality has kind of just exploded obviously the transaction numbers have started to increase dramatically on wall street do you think we'll see any kind of government regulation that could come down and kind of put some um, controls on this so it's interesting this year i came into this year and i thought there would be two potential regulatory uh, announcements throughout the year sometime I'm not exactly sure what where i thought the first one would be a regulatory discussion about cryptocurrencies of some sort Right. And that happened within the first three weeks of this year. And that was Janet Yellen who came out and said, hey, you yep. know what? We need to look at this and watch what's going on here because a lot of the things, in her opinion, were used for nefarious purposes, illegal activity. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one. The second one was a regulation or at least something to do with SPACs, special purpose acquisition vehicles, again, being per per uh, uh, really um, moved by some of the same players, by the way. OK, you got the mm. Port Noise, you got the Chamas, you got the um, not so much Elon Musk, but you got several others that are looking at this. And uh, now when it comes to this, here's what has to happen. Number one, you have to limit the margin availability of right. what is used, the leverage factor, because you have a stock that's up. You buy it today, you leverage it up, put all sorts of money into it. It comes down 50 percent, you lose all your money. It comes yes. down 60 percent, you lose more than that, and then you owe the bank money. That's yep. no fun. So I think the, the, the margin, the leverage issues have to be controlled a little bit more. Um, and you have to wonder, the Wall Street bets, whether or not this is going to be considered a violation of SEC uh, laws where you had a manipula uh, manipulation by a group of people in a concerted mm -hmm. effort to do something on a stock. It's yeah. much easier to prove when five or ten people get together in a room and say, hey, we are going to hit this stock. We're going to make it go up. We're going to make it go down, whatever it is. And that's a conspiracy of sorts, and that's sure. elite. Yep. Now, how do you prove that with Wall Street bets? I mean, if you read the thread, it's like, yeah, let's get them. Keep on buying till you're blue in the face. You know, to the moon is going. Rocket ship that's never going to end. This is going to be the way to, you know, your riches. And I mean, seriously, haven't you seen this before on the Bitcoin boards? It's the same people. You have, yeah. Yep. The same yep. exact discussions. Yep. To the moon, you know, you're going to be a holder. Um, you're going to be left holding the bag on this one is what you're going to be a holder of. 
You know, we've seen that kind of break down a little bit with AMC coming out with a secondary offering stock right. down 50, 60 percent. Uh, top to bottom today was about a 70 percent move on GameStop. I mean, if that's not hard stopping stuff, uh, it's OK. Like I said, I have no objection to it. But as David Tepper said today, he said, listen, it was a party in 1999. Uh, <laughs> now it's a gang up Inc. And it didn't well end well in 1999 and uh, during the dot-com bubble. And I not think it's going to be uh, – there is either going to have the same thing. Old well stars. There. All right. So you, you mentioned leverage and, and kind of the whole aspect with, with someone like, uh, say, a Robin Hood when you have millions of these players who are – basically maybe have less than $1,000 in the market and they do go into – leveraging themselves how would robin hood ever collect on that if they start losing you know <laughs> losing their time i mean this could right. take down robin hood of course that's why they're limiting it. that's why they're saying you know what you can't do things like certain uh, option positions potentially possibly shorting uh margin use is going to be uh curtailed because you have to you cannot allow yep. it. not only for this it's any stock that has excess volatility is always this yep. is not new this is not like oh mm -hmm. blame yep. wall street for the screwing here again this is not new it it's, makes total business sense to limit the amount of leverage or borrowed money that you could use to buy stocks mm -hmm. on a volatile name. Yeah, we see yeah. that all the time. I, every yeah. day in my office, we see an alert come out that, hey, stock ABC, margin requirements have changed. Yeah. When you see the volatility on markets themselves, you see that in the futures markets, they will change the margin availability and what the initial margin requirement is on a contract. This is nothing new. But people are trying to make it seem like, look what they did. They tried to get us again. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing is, is, is uh, well, frankly, it's, it's fun. But I think there's a lot of people that need to do a lot of thinking about, is this really investing or is this just simply, as you said, uh, you know, gambling. going, going yeah. to the casino? Yeah, it's gambling. Um, all right. So the impact on, let's talk about the impact on the market, the impact on the hedge funds and the shorts. Because there's some big numbers here. I mean, we, yeah. we we're seeing now five billion. Do you think this is a long-term scenario that could play out? And how fast do you think someone like a Congress would act on kind of restructuring some of the SEC pushes? Can can they get into the market very quickly with a, a regulation? I think the SEC will get right on this, and I think they're looking at this already. I don't think there's any question. There's going to be a quick look at this of what's going on. Um, in terms of the, uh, the the idea of, of you know what else is it going to do in terms of a destabilizing force potentially for markets, right. already already has been. Yeah. You look what happened uh, on Wednesday when these things were flying up and where shorts was getting squeezed Tuesday as well. What you saw was a sell off in other sectors because what was happening was there was an unwind happening. Right, With right. Shorts were having to get rid of and find money to pay for. They pulled the money out of other positions, right. pushed right. them in. And what we're finding is that uh, I think I think this could be a very destabilizing issue if mm -hmm. this is going to happen because we may not like the idea of shorting a stock, but I got to tell you something: everyone listening, watching right now, should thank short sellers. And I'm serious about this. I'll tell you why. And I short stocks now. I'm not an. We don't short like big number. You know, we 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 hedge out portfolio risk. We buy a couple of positions on. Well, sell a couple of positions on the short side. We're not a dedicated short uh, seller, but where it makes sense, it makes sense. Here's why you want to thank them. When markets are coming down, they're coming down hard, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming down 10, 15, 20 percent. Everybody selling. Nobody yep. wants a part of it. You know what I'm talking about, right? You get that oh, yeah. mode. We're like, yep. I am never investing again. Okay. Yep. And then who is it out there that's going to hang on and say, we're ready to buy? It's the short sellers that are looking to cover their positions and right. it starts holding a baseline on this, yeah. whether it's positions in futures, in, in closing option positions or individual stocks, ETFs. They're out there ready to buy. They are the first catalyst usually to buy stocks. Every market bottom starts with a short covering and then a short squeeze maneuver. Ever mm -hmm. see what happens on a bottom when all of a sudden you start seeing it move back up and then it sh shoots back up off the bottom? Those V bottoms are shorts getting squeezed or closing positions, creating a base. If there wasn't any of that and there was only buyers available in the market, yeah. then you'd only have sellers forever in those market situations and people right. would be very reluctant to get back in. Yeah, that definitely kind of shakes the whole scenario. Of course, there's a lot of movement uh, with all of these kinds of technology implementations that are moving into the market because this is really kind of the first time. It used to be a little bit more of a structured man's game 
of getting into investing. I mean, it, we, you know, we've, we've seen, mes now, we've seen message boards. We've seen tons of message boards. Can I be honest with you? There's nothing different yeah. here. Nothing different. So you're, you're but different. yes, but do you not feel like the number of transactions and the number of investors that are in the market today, that's up dramatically? That's up dramatically. And yeah, there's people playing $200 worth because there's yep. no commissions, right? That is the difference in what's happening. Mm -hmm. There may be a lot more widespread individuals doing this uh, on their own, but the old days you had brokers that would do it, you know, that would take your order, they call you up, hey, I got a deal for you, you know? Right, right. right. So, uh, so uh, but that's the difference, you know, that everybody not only has the availability of looking at Reddit on their phone, yep. and swiping over and opening up their Robinhood, pushing the button, and yep. buying, right? Yep. That's the difference right now. All so, right, so, so your thoughts on, because we get a lot of talk here on the, the whole issue of Robin Hood. I mean, you get some people like uh, you get Scott Galloway, who's uh, you know a big podcaster. He is super anti Robin Hood. This he thinks they are just uh, the the scourge of society, gamifying <laughs> what's happening in the investment world and right. and putting a lot of people at risk that should not be at risk. Your I, thoughts I, on that? I concur, first of all, on that. But moreover, what I find really fascinating is they think that uh, traders think that Robin Hood's a really free platform. It is right. not. Yeah. As a matter of fact, studies if the study has gone through and shown that there is an actual major cost to investing with them because they pay for order throw, flow or the, the companies that pay for order flow um, are actually paying Robin Hood and you're not getting really the best execution. They mm -hmm. have been sanctioned, I believe, for some of their best execution issues. And uh, it, it's an interesting way to go, but you know it is a gamification of it, and I think that's a problem as well. But you know it appeals to the people who don't have a job right now, who are or or people that are working, uh, that are just first-time investors, or people that you know just want to have fun and want to get a charge out of gambling. Because in a time right. when we don't have sports betting out there, yeah, yeah, this, this is, is basically yeah, this is this the is uh, is. the release for that. All so right, if you're still <laughs> just doing your thing. It's just all thumbs, just all thumbs. Yeah. All right. So, so any any market ripples that this could have over time? I mean, I think the issue is it's going to be looked at and found, and there may be some people that are very sensitive to looking at owning positions that have high short interest, which they should have done to begin with. Right. Like if, if you if you see there's a high short interest, initially I think the novice investor thinks, "Wow, a lot of people are betting against them. That must be a real good bet for the downside." Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, the higher the short interest is, the more that has to be busted out when things turn, if they turn. Yeah. yeah. So I would rather almost short companies that don't have sh high short interest. Short you interest, what I'm yeah. saying? And if yeah. I'm right, everybody's going to follow me in and then eventually I'll be the first one. Um, but I think the issue is going to be that, again, this David and Goliath thing that 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 Portnoy is trying to rally the troops with or, you know, with this. I just again, I think this is is, is a simple greed factor that. Um, is in the markets and is embedded in there. You know, if if you watch uh, whatever movie is out there uh, that you could think of, from you know, Wall Street to <laughs> you name it. <laughs> you know, um, and and you know the, the big question is who's behind it. I think is the is going to really resolve what impact this has on markets. If it is just the millions of average people out there that are just novice traders that are just yep. ganged up together, kind of one thing. If they're going to try to bust Wall Street, not good for anybody. If it yep. is in fact another major PR campaign, it was just again a scam, uh, there's going to be some ramifications with that and it's going to be yeah. pretty ugly. Well, yeah, I think the SEC is obviously going to be jumping into the middle of this. This is, it just smells a little weird, you know, to me. And, you know, when I look at, at how some of these things and we, you know, our businesses, we track a lot of uh, social data and really kind of go into analysis like that. And usually things like this have somebody pulling, there is a puppet master. Uh, there's always somebody pulling the string, right? Somebody's pulling a string. And right. the question is who? You know, hey, listen, well, hey, I think it's the Russians. The I think they're pulling the string like they always did, but somehow this just unraveled the entire sweater. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and, yeah. and it got, got out of control and it happens. That's the risk of pulling on the string. No doubt, no doubt. All right, all right. while I've got you on, EV uh, news is go going off the hook. Uh, Tesla reported their earnings yesterday, missed a few things, hit on a couple of other things. I know, are you a Tesla bull or are you a Tesla shorter? <laughs> What's your situation there? You know, I just can't, I cannot, I, I have no, no problem with Tesla in terms of the cars and all that and the brilliance behind everything that Elon Musk does. 
Um, I cannot wrap my head around the valuation. Valuation. Yeah. Call me, call me stupid. Fine, I'll take it. Uh, I just cannot wrap my head around the valuation that this company. When I look at it now, you say, "Well, it's not a car company." Well, it is a car company. Well, it's a technology company. Well, even at a technology company, the valuations are out of control. Well, it's yeah. a space company. Okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> you know, it's a solar company. All right, so we put it all together, average the valuations of all these different components of where the money comes in. Still doesn't make sense. So I think it's more of a cult stock, and that's not a really a negative. It's more of if you love the car, you love the company, you know, it, it's kind of like, you know, I have it, I love it. You know, this is something that I want. I drink a lot of Diet Coke, so I buy Coca-Cola. Uh, you know, less of a love affair with Coca-Cola, for example, than you may have with the car. Uh, but I, I can't wrap my head too much, too, too much around um, the valuation is the problem. Yeah, so their whole position is obviously is is really kind of the blue sky aspect of what this is going to do to society in, in general. And there is a lot of companies or, or, or are a lot of companies really kind of jumping on the bandwagon here. So it's going to be interesting to see that moving. Any targets that you... By the way, let me just interrupt for one second. Even yeah. Elon Musk was trying to validate the valuation, valuation. in his conference call Yesterday. by saying, well, yep. if we do this many cars and we increase by 50%, oh, okay, 50%, and we have these robo-taxis, which would be like 100% margin or something like that, and then if we do this and that, and then trillion dollar valuation. Okay. Yeah. You know? Well, the well the robo taxi concept, if they can pull that off, that is a very very intriguing number I, because I, get, I, I I've talked it's about this. I think crazy. It's crazy use of your car. That also means less cars on the road, though. There's some other implications if you think about it. It's not. It, it changes a whole dynamic. If I'm not using my car 85, 95 percent of the day, mm -hmm. and it's just sitting downstairs, and then somebody, you know, I say, okay, unleash it, go, go to work, and, and that's fine. <laughs> but that also means that all the people it's driving don't need cars. So let's kind Uber. of make sure. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, just let's make sure that we know where this is displacing, displacing, who is displacing. It's and just displacing just Uber. It's just displacing Uber, yeah. which is, you know, that's one of my, you know, if I was going to short a stock, that would be the one I would, I would short right now. Just Uber. Uber in Central, uh, don't get me started on how it affects the restaurant industry. I don't <laughs> even want to go there because that's, that's, that's where I really draw the line with it. Right. With Uber, right. but yes, definitely. Uh, okay, so as you you had mentioned, uh, any stocks that you would say be on the lookout uh, for in the next few weeks, in relationship to this kind of manipulation play that's happening from um, well, or uh, Reddit. I mean, the Reddit it's going to be they're going to keep on trying to test the waters with any high short interest stock. Okay, um, I would think that this event is kind of getting long in the tooth here. Already, and, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 it was quite two an event. weeks in. Yeah, yeah. Two it's weeks quite in. an event, um, and that doesn't mean we're not going to see that. You know, I don't necessarily think once everybody knows what's going on, it doesn't usually happen again. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, yeah. This, it'll be something else. So something you feel else. this is a this is truly just a one off potentially, uh, not going to have a long term effect other than what we're going to see in the regulatory side of it, and most of the shorts who you know basically lost a lot of money. I think you may see some possibility of uh, some of the stocks that are heavily shorted, reasonably heavily shorted, start to move up because they people that are shorting it don't want to be a part of this. Right, right. They say, let's wait for this all to cool down. Yeah. And then we'll deal with it back again. So yeah. you have that going on. But, you know, with the fact that we also have stimulus bill now being talked about by Schumer, mm -hmm. or talk about yep. it, you know, that's going to hang a carrot in front of markets for a while. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, so there's all this that's going on. This is another fourteen hundred dollar potentially right. PPP program. Uh, you know, another what one point nine trillion with a, a hike in minimum wage. There's all sorts of things that are going on that are, are, are markets are going to pay attention to because they're not paying attention to anything else. Mm -hmm. They're not paying attention to a shortfall in GDP today. They're not paying right. attention to a shortfall in the housing markets today. Price in the dollar. So, Yep. Yeah, so so this is kind of like uh, has a mind of its own. And what happened is the masses that were pushing it up every day kind of shifted over the last yep. several days. And you notice the market came in five yep. days down on the down. It kind of shifted into this other area, concentrated it. And, and it was like a kind of a, 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 a hose that was constricted. It just really was pumping out a lot of uh, excess into only a few names. Yeah, yeah. Well, the transaction numbers were off the charts in, in terms of just volume of trading. 100 billion shares traded at AMC yesterday. Yeah, that's just out no, of this it's a billion world. Shares. I think it was a billion shares yesterday. It was, it was ridiculous. All these, these, all these numbers are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you want to trade it? I am totally power to you. I have no problem with it. I think it's awesome. You know, make money, trade it, but just know, listen, know what the risk is, know what you're yep. getting yourself into, Absolutely. know where the opportunities lie, know what the losses are. Yeah, make sure before sure. you get into it, you set your target. All right, I'm willing to lose or make this much, and then go from there. Yep. It's the way to it's the way to play anything in right. business. You know, you do the same thing in a business right. venture. You do the same thing What's in my best you know. case. It's my worst case, right? You got it. That's Absolutely. Good. All right, Andrew. It's always good having you on the show. Thanks. I love uh, picking your brain. Hopefully, uh, we'll see how this goes. There's a lot of with the current situation of business and kind of economics as the outset right now. We may be talking soon again. Yeah. It's going to be fun <laughs> if nothing else, right? Yeah, you definitely got to pay attention today. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, it's buddy, good having thanks you. Thanks so much. Thanks for stopping in. All right, so all of you guys uh, joining us over on the podcast side of this uh, here on Override, we kind of drive down into some very interesting topics here. Usually it's on the edge of technology and business and politics, really kind of the economics of what drives our society on every day. Make sure and leave a uh, rating on the podcast if you like what you hear. If you want to hear more, you maybe have a topic that you think would be a great one for us to explore, just shoot us an email to producer at reverendnetworks.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time on Override. Right.